What's happening, tennis fans? It is Nate with Player Court. Today, we're taking a look at a critical joint position, specifically of the elbow on the forehand. And if it's incorrect, how much it kills the potential for power. But when correct, man, it can give you all the power, the potential for power in the world. Speaking of powerful forehands, there may be no bigger forehand that the tour has ever seen than Juan Martin Del Potro, who we're taking a look at today. Now, arguably, Fernando Gonzalez and a few others out there, Carlos Alcarez, man, it has got some power. But they all have this common commonality of the high elbow. All right, so let's jump into this and take a look at what I'm talking about. And here through the Del Potro take back, he's got one of the highest take backs on tour. Now, I don't suggest for us mere mortals, for us that aren't making a living getting paid to play tennis, I don't suggest that we take the big loop that Delpo has. But what I think we all can put into our games or implement to our games is getting our elbow, elbow up and away from the body. And Delpo illustrates this perfectly here. We want to make sure that we're keeping plenty of space between the elbow and the torso. Now what happens is when the elbow tucks in, your lever becomes very small, right? So imagine a roller coaster. The more the roller coaster can climb and then loop, the more momentum it's gonna work out to the ball. Now, as the elbow tucks in, that radius, that circle becomes much smaller. So without taking the racket up super high, you can still get your elbow nice and clear from the body. It doesn't have to be way up here, right? You can still be here, as we see with like the Federer forehand, more so through this space. All right, so when this happens, I'll go ahead and let this play through. You can see how much momentum the racket is building up to the ball. Now, with a high elbow, it also allows plenty of space between the elbow and the body on the forward swing. Now here, as a result, we see the arm straightening out on the backswing. Now, one of the mistakes, and we see this a lot, is players trying to intentionally straighten their arm on the backswing and get the arm straight out to contact. That's not gonna work because you're losing all of the kinetic energy, all of that, everything that you've built up from the ground up. As you're straighten the arm, it's like trying to swing a stick. We wanna swing a bull whip. So allow this to happen organically. As you start to uncoil, the arm will straighten up. Here we see the slot, racket working off about 45 degrees with the butt cap more out towards the ball. And now that lever working out to contact. All right, so one of the commonalities I'll show you from a side view is, is a lot of times when the racket straightens out on the back end of the stroke, what we're gonna see is that the chest here, you can see, pay attention to the just do it sign uh, on the t-shirt, his chest opens up much, much earlier than we'd see on, on some of the other forehands. All right, this is you know, common. We see with Diego Schwartzman, right? The, the, here with an Eastern grip and this large lever, it becomes extremely apparent. All right, so elbow clears the body, plenty of space. So let's go back for just a second and talk about a second advantage outside of just power. But keeping the elbow up and away from the body, it also allows us to fight off high balls. So Delpo is dangerous regardless of how high you're playing the ball, right? So if the ball is up here, his strike zone is here, 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 right? Because he's able to create that momentum well above the shoulder because of the high elbow. All right, so we'll let this play through, and then I'm gonna show you another example of the high elbow take back. Gorgeous forehand. Why don't we give a small toe for that forehand? All right, so let's take a look at Gael Monfils here, and we're gonna see a stylistic difference but we're also going to see a high elbow. Now this is a little bit more next gen. We can see the racket tip is already facing out towards the opponent right there. But here, pay close attention to the space in his elbow and his torso. All right, plenty of space. So when you start with space, it allows you to maintain that space throughout the stroke, as we also see there. All right, and keeping that contact out in front. Now, power is, is all about 
your ability to use your lower body and really, you know, loading through the thoracic spine. But remember, it's all about contact too. And the more the racket can extend out, the more it delivers speed to the ball. The more jammed up it is, the less it can help with that power. And that's why we want to keep that elbow out away from the body. One of the main ways we can ensure this happens is by starting with the correct ready position. If you allow your elbows to tuck in on the ready position, you're gonna be doomed from the start. It's gonna be really hard to pull the elbow out away from your body. Give yourself some space. We talk about the beach ball. In your ready position, start as if you're holding a beach ball. So that way when you turn, the elbow starts getting out away from the body, all right? And so that position there is absolutely critical. We'll watch Showtime here, Monfils. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> Running smash, all right? But what I do want you to try at home is getting that elbow out away from the body. Guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed today's content, hit that like button, maybe share it with a friend that needs some help with their forehand. And we have left in the comment section a link to our platform where we help you meet other players in your area, the same skill level for practice or matches. You can check that out for absolutely free. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I really hope it helped a ton. I'll see you next time.